Welcome, welcome to Shadow Me Tarot. Earlier this year, there was a new release by a company called The Witchy Cauldron. And I was really very excited about this deck because it had all of these, um, uh, um, gosh, why can't I speak? Okay, chakra stuff. It had chakra stuff related to it. It had, it had all kinds of great little things, keywords, astrology, um, zodiac, chakras, the meanings of the cards, and I was super excited about, about this deck. And then when I got it, it wasn't quite what I expected, and I, and I noticed a few, it, it was actually what I expected, but I just noticed a few kind of like, um, I guess, mistakes in it. So I did the review. This deck has been extremely popular on the channel. A lot of you guys are using it um, to uh, learn your tarot cards, which is fabulous. Uh, but we, she just sent me the new updated version of it. So, uh, when I reached out to her to get the, uh, copies of the updated card, she said, Oh no, we're going to send you a whole new box. And I am going to do a video just out of uh, appreciation for that. So I'm going to open up this beautiful, large package that looks much larger than this replacement deck and see what we got here. I was so excited. I'm so excited. So we've got one, two, three, something four, and something five here. So I believe that this looks like three decks, but this one looks bigger. Maybe it's just the packaging, but it looks bigger. I'm going to go with bigger. I'm going to go with the bigger. Um, this is exciting. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Witchy Cauldron, for um, for sending these out to me. Um, oh, look. This is the cute little sticker on here from the Wizard of Oz. It says, you've always had the power, my dear. You just had to learn it for yourself. All right. Let's take a look at this deck. I'm, oh, look at the box. It's prettier. Oh, wow. This is a completely different tarot. This cannot be the same tarot. <gasps> I'm so excited. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay. I I should open up all of the packages first, but I'm like, I must know if this is a new, completely new deck. Um, is this a completely new deck? Oh, my goodness. Surprise. Um, okay, and this is brand new um, for this year. It has a book. Oh, my God. It has. Oh, my God. That is gorgeous. Oh, it has a. Oh, my gosh. It's the Le Lepus Tarot, illustrated by Artem Chernobyl. And um, it's got a good, decent-sized book here. It has reverse cards. Um, it has So it has reverse card meanings. Single card spread, past, present, future spread, Celtic cross spread. Oh, well, this is just gorgeous. Thank you so much, Witchy Cauldron. I will do another unboxing specifically for this deck. Um, oh, my God. Those are gorgeous. And they're blue gilded. I'm like, I don't want to. Oh, this is incredible. Okay. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so I will definitely do another unboxing. We'll compare this to the uh, traditional Rider weight. Oh my God, this is just so exciting. Okay, now I want to know what's in the package. I think I know what this is just because um, of this, but I think this came with this. Um, and it looks like, oh, this is nice. What is this? What is this? This is, oh my God, this is really nice. This is incredibly nice. Um, this is a... Um, it looks kind of like a... This definitely looks like a, a Celtic cross. Um, it's just the outcome is over here, is over on this side instead of up here. This is gorgeous. This is double layered. This is the nicest... Um, cloth I think I've ever received. Um, it's got kind of like a velvety thing. It's almost got like a silk backing. I don't know that it's silk, but it feels silky. Um, and it's, it's like a quilt. I mean, it's got two layers. That's incredible. 
Thank you so much, Witchy Cauldron. <clears throat> this is beautiful. So, I mean, clearly, Witchy Cauldron cares about the quality of product that they're um, um, that they're putting out. They really stepped up the game with the new box that they put out. Um, the universe is never quit. It's always providing answers and guidance. All right, cool. All right, so this must be the replacement for this deck since this one is brand new. I am so excited. Um, oh, wait, wait, we have another gift over here too. I wanna see what this one is too. Gifts, gifts, gifts galore. Oh, and that's beautiful. Look at that velvet pouch. I mean, <gasps> OMG, I love this. So I've got a three card layout and I've got a pouch that I can hold the cards in. Um, and I'm just wondering, this must be definitely for these. Oh my gosh. This is the old deck, by the way, that I'm playing with here. OMG, I love this. This is I love this. This is going to go in my travel pack. I will use this always. That is brilliant. I think that's incredible. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. <clears throat> All right. This is so fun. I love these. Um, I In the past, I wouldn't even consider buying something like this, but this is so useful and so unique and such high quality. I love that it has this little pocket here. I love that it's kind of satiny on the inside because you always want to keep your cards protected. And then it's got this velvet on the outside. This is beautiful. And then it's a drawstring to, to kind of tie it all together. Gorgeous. Oh my goodness. And purple. Beautiful purple. Okay, so now I'll move on to... Um, so this is a replacement deck, I believe, for these. Um, let's see. Um, what we did with the second edition here. This is a new tarot. This is a, this is just a regular tarot. I'm confuzzled. All right, let's see. I mean, this has got the history, history of, um, Pamela Coleman Smith on the back here, so that's kind of cool. This is definitely very thick in terms of like, I mean, this is the traditional writer weight, and it looks like the cardstock is most definitely thicker. I mean, it's an almost, I don't want to say almost double, but it's at least a third, 30% 30 larger than my traditional one. Oh, wow. Um, all right, so here's that, and we've got, okay, so this is nice, this is just kind of like a new little Rider weight tarot deck, um, so I guess when you're outgrowing the, um, <clears throat> the trainer deck, then you can move on to, um, the upgraded one, this is very nice, these are nice to have, um, I was like, <clears throat> I like to give these away, actually, um, I would say it's super important to, have a deck that resonates for you, but you should know this particular Rider weight deck just because every deck is based on it. Um, but the messages that come across for me for a traditional Rider weight is um, they could be pretty intense. Um, so <laughs> um, I almost feel like you have to be an expert when you're working with these, but every person should be working with these, right? So I don't know. It's it's. This is the deck to have. This the original Rider Way is the deck to have. Um, there's so much symbolism involved in that. I mean, look at this. This is, I think, what the the cloth comes with. Um, and the cloth is available on Etsy. It looks like. Um, so we've got. I mean, this is gorgeous. Look at that. Full color pages, um, or full color card. You know, definitions. And this is great. This is great. Um, I even, I, I kind of like, I'm just going to read the King of Pentacles. It says, present and future security is a priority now. Um, ownership, achievement through persistent 
effort, climbing the corporate ladder, money in the bank, protection, money talks, wealth, patient, power, stability, reliability, satisfaction, organizational skills, financiers, engineers, mathematicians, property owners, business people, those who work with the land. And then in the reversed, it says lack of business sense, vulgarity, a bully, a dictator, a waste, a wastrel, one who mismanages money, someone who will do anything for money. Um, and then this describes like the shuffling process, cards that jump out while shuffling, shuffling, oops, <laughs> during the process of meditative shuffling, it often happens that a single card or a small group of cards seem to jump out of the deck and turn themselves upright. Cards that make themselves visible in this manner are always significant and the reader should study them carefully before going ahead with the originally intended spread. So thank you very much for, um, I mean, this is beautiful. Thank you, Witchy Cauldron. All right. Now, I hope, I hope, I hope, or maybe I can just do the, um, I was like, maybe I can do the comparison with this deck here. <clears throat> maybe I'll do them together and just do all Witchy Cauldron product, products. I love it. <clears throat> what a great little store. How well they've packaged these. I mean, this is very, very well packaged, and I do like anything <clears throat> when you're shipping or when anybody is shipping um, these cards. It's so easy for them to dent the boxes because they get thrown around in envelopes. So to see it in the bubble wrap like this is always <clears throat> good because I know that my corners are going to be intact. All right, let's see. I like the paper because I'm like. It's easy to rip, even though I'm trying to like not rip it. Uh, OMG, okay. This is the best surprise ever. <clears throat> so one of my my um, criticisms with the old deck was there's no finger holes. It's impossible to get the box part, right? You gotta like shake it and so she put the finger holes in there. That's exciting. Um, box looks about the same size. Um and I mean, I got my work cut out for me today. I've got these two unboxings now. All right. So let's go ahead and kind of, um, it's definitely easier to read on the side here, I can see. Oh, look at this. We've got a Zodiac chart. One card daily reading. What shall I do? And, oh, I love this. I love this. <clears throat> Each one of these corresponds. Um, so the root chakra I have, the sacral chakra I, I feel, the solar plexus chakra I can, the heart chakra I love, the throat chakra I speak, the third eye chakra I see and the crown chakra I know. I love this. You know what's interesting to me about this little list here is though um, is I never noticed it before until just now but these same sayings correspond to half the zodiac as well. So oftentimes um, let's see if it has it. Oh my gosh this is a nice little chart too with these planets. The sun, Mercury, Venus, Moon, the Mars, um, let's go ahead and zoom it in a little bit so you guys can see. I mean, that's, that's useful. I find that to be useful. But, um, I do, I do like, th I like this very much. Um, because when I start seeing colors now, which I haven't associated before in the past, <clears throat> Like Scorpio is I desire. I believe um, Aries is I am. Um, Virgo is Virgo is I analyze. Gemini is I think. Um, the uh, let's see, it's Taurus. Taurus is I have. Right. Um, Gemini is I think. Leo is I will. Cardner, uh, cancer is I feel. So as you're kind of going through these, you can attribute, now you can start attributing um, the colors with the words I have. 
Um, you can do this with the different zodiacs as well. It's just not listed in this deck, but um, these are very useful. And you'll find that as you kind of learn your astrology stuff too, that these also um, come into play with um, with astrology. Um, but any of these I love, I analyze, I create, I use, I feel, I know, I know is Aquarius, I believe Pisces, let's see. Um, so I love this. I think this is incredible. Um, this is very, very useful. And then as you see these, as you kind of go through them and you learn the different, the deck, and as you notice the colors throughout the decks as well and the different um, symbolism of color, um, you'll be able to apply some of these phrases of I love, I can, I feel, I have um, into your readings. And then if you know that it's ruled by a specific planet, so like if it's ruled by the sun, um, the conscious mind and the ego. Um, so if you get something that's kind of like next to I feel versus the conscious mind and the ego that's ruled by the sun, um, you might be thinking too much. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm just saying like, this is this is a great resource. I think this is a great resource. Um, I love that she's got all the symbols for the zodiac signs and their dates lined up because dates, um, you can sometimes use these in your tarot readings um, to determine timing of something. So this is nice that they've got a little um, one card daily reading, what shall I do? And then on this side they have the um, chakra key. That's pretty awesome, pretty awesome ladies. All right, the back is the same, so I'm going to have to be very careful not to mix these up because um, the back is the same. The box is slightly different, and we've got these new um, key cards, so that's beautiful. Okay, so I think for this video, just because we're mainly doing an unboxing for the Witchy Cauldrons um, Learning Tarot Cards, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the first edition um, that I originally did that you can see on the website and I'm going to compare it with the second edition. But I may go through and remake the video um, so that we have all of the second um, second edition definitions because um, I'm pretty sure they're going to be a little bit more accurate. Some things that I noticed right off the bat, this where it's where I've got to read the question which is one of the things that I absolutely love is that there's an affirmation on each of these cards. Um, and for the fool, it's time to embark on a brand new beginning. And I remember when I was doing the first video, I was like looking so close at this card. I was like, I can't see this. I can't read it. It's like in some of the cards, it was really, really bad. Um, so one of the things that I'm noticing in this deck is that the symbols and the card itself, the picture of the fool is smaller. Um, the chakra, uh, symbol is smaller. And even the planet symbol is smaller. Um, it looks like they've used a different font for the maybe. It is a lot more clear to read, I think, this maybe in the new deck versus the maybe in the old deck. And the other thing I'm noticing is that there's a lot um, more um, explanation in the reverse. So for the upright, it looks like it's about the same. The font is a little bit larger, which is wonderful. That's a great thing. Um, but in the reverse, um, it says uh, foolishness, fear of the unknown, impulsiveness, poor judgment, risk, naivety, and um, inexperience. And what we have in the reverse for the original um, edition was just recklessness, fearlessness, and risk. Um, so I, I, I like that. I think that's great. The more um, you can give us on a little card to kind of learn the uprights and the reverse, the better. Um, so, so far, first card, I'm, I'm very impressed. I'm very pleased um, with the outcome. All right, let's take a look. We've got the magician. Um, and it looks like um, we've got a little bit different highlighted background here. Um, the font has changed. Um, the picture is, it's not even noticeably smaller, um, but the words are noticeably larger. Um, so I have all the resources I need, inner and outer. Um, and in the reverse, um, she changed it um, entirely, which I believe the Magician card was one of the ones that was um, was incorrect when I went through it the last time. So And, and only in the reverse. So um, everything in the upright is the same. In the reverse now, it says blocked creativity. Oh, I can't read it upside down. Oh, feigned expertise, weakness, indecision, frustration, and delays. 
Um, that almost sounds like imposter syndrome, right? Feigned expertise. Um, I like that. I've never seen that as an, as a, um, I've never seen that as a definition, feigned expertise, but I can see it as a definition. Um, and it gave me the immediate overwhelming sense of imposter um, syndrome. So, hmm, interesting. Um, so it looks like mm, this is the upright definition has stayed the same. We've got some um, sizing of the font has changed. The, the font itself has changed, so it's more clear. Um, and the definition for number for the magician has been expanded. So um, <clears throat> same thing here. We've got uh, my knowledge is my best guide in all is the is the affirmation. Um, it looks like. There is um, something extra on um, the bottom of this. The, this one, it says discovering your, your truth, um, which is not on this one. And in the um, reverse, it's different because it says misuse of intuition, acting on bias or prejudi prejudice, manipulativeness, lack of emotion or emotional control. Um, <clears throat> I'm just kind of just kind of comparing here. I definitely like that the affirmation affirmations are much larger on the side here. Definitely an improvement. The box is an improvement. I want to say that the cardstock might be slightly thicker because I'm telling you, like it's like a card or maybe two, almost two cards larger than the previous deck. So they may have even upgraded the cardstock here a little bit. Um. All right, so let's move on to number three, the Empress. Um. The, this has stayed the same. It looks like the affirmation has stayed the same. Um, in the reverse, uh, that has also stayed the same. So the only thing that's different is the size of the images, um, the font, and, and yeah, the, they've they've exchanged um, image size for font size, and I appreciate that 100%. All right, and then we've got the emperor. Um, nothing has changed other than the font size on everything. And this is so much larger. It's beautiful. Um, that's, that's fantastic. All right. And then we have the Hierophant. Um, nothing has really changed on this one. Although I do like the way that this is, um, how this reads on the side here a lot better. Um, but it doesn't look like much has changed. On, nothing has changed on that one. Uh, nothing has changed on this one. The chariot. Oh, something's changed on here. In the reverse, the chariot now says... Um, um, so it has everything else except um, it is now also it also includes being blocked by obstacles. So the chariot has changed only by that one little bit. Like I said, I might do a whole new video and just read the uprights again and then um, read the reverses again um, for this deck. A lot of you have found it very very useful. I know that you're using this to learn uh, to learn your cards. So I, I'm pleased with the outcome of the, the second edition here for sure and absolutely would recommend it um, for purchase and I'll, I'll put a link in um, I'll put a link below so that you guys can um, purchase this from her at the witchy cauldron um, let's see change the color here much uh, larger font um, but the meanings have stayed the same that's good um, cause there was only like six cards, I think that had some, um, some issues, but I know when you go back and you kind of do your editing and you go, Oh my gosh, there's these issues, um, that, uh, you sometimes will notice a few things. So I'm noticing a few things that are changed that didn't necessarily need to be changed, but I definitely think they're an improvement. Um, I definitely, I'm, I, I do like the, the change in font. Um, I do like the change in the font size. <laughs> I think you did really, really well, Witchy Cauldron. I think you guys did a great job with this upgrade. Um, okay, so this is a little bit different. Um, the reverse is a little bit different on the... Um, I, I feel like he, Witchy Cauldron took a lot more time on the on the reverse. 
Um, I could be wrong here. Let's see. No, they did. They, they put some more effort into these reverse meanings and, and added some stuff here. So I really do appreciate that. Um, so the, the new thing here after antisocial and restrictive is paralyzed by fear. Um, so that is the new, the new definition or the new part of the definition on this card. Um, play setbacks. So everything looks the same here on the wheel of fortune. And let's see, looks like we've gotten This one's exactly the same. I think what I was comparing it here is like, is this the same size font or is it just different font? Or I can I can't tell. I almost feel like this is a little bit larger than this one. But what's important for me is these affirmations are really readable now, where they weren't really before. Um, then we've got the hangman. And I don't see off the bat any changes other than they removed contemplation from this. Probably they needed this space. Um, feeling trapped, confined, self-limiting, uncertain, lack of direction, needing release, letting go, sacrifice, waiting, lack of direction, perspective, and then contemplation is missing from this one. Um, but everything else looks the same. Then we have the death card. Um, everything looks the same on that. Yep, everything is the same on there. Um, I guess my only confusion is like, I feel like this is slightly smaller font than this and, and I don't think the smaller font is like the best thing for these cards because there's so much kind of happening. Um, but it's negligible. I mean, it's really not even noticeable. I mean, it's noticeable only because they're side by side. Um, and I can read them, so <laughs> my old ass can read it. It's good. It works. Um, but I don't see anything. Uh, oh, no. This one has an extra... Um, In the reverse, it, it has added hastiness to um, to its definition. It has um, added hastiness to the new um, to the new deck. All right, and then we go into the fifteen. I can definitely read this better. Um, it's less translucent, so it's easier to read. Um, the affirmation is a lot easier to read. Let's see, the bottom message is the same. And let's see, we've got, um, it looks like most everything is the same, except, let's see, this says imbalance, self-indulgence, excess, clashing, lack of perspective, discord, antagonism, recklessness, and hastiness. So it just added hastiness to the definition on that one. And then we've got 16, the tower. All that looks the same. All of that looks the same. And then 17. Uh, that looks the same. All of that looks the same. I guess what I'm not understanding is why'd you go smaller on this font? Like this font was fine. <laughs> it is noticeably, it is noticeably slightly smaller. It's not that it's hard to read, but it's, you know, it's smaller. Um, <clears throat> uh, but the moon looks identical, looks the same. Um, it looks like um, this is about the same. Uh, the only difference is in the new in the new deck, they have added abortion. 
to miscarriage, stillbirth, and abortion now. And then 20, judgment. That all looks the same. Yep, everything is the same. So we're just kind of, this affirmation and, and the um, and the chakras, um, even some of the planet kind of things are unique definitely for this for this deck. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons that I was so excited to, to get it when it first came out. Um, so I'm, I, I really am pleased with this because it is important to kind of just know, it is just kind of, the more you know, like in terms of astrology or chakras or even affirmations that you're associating and attributing a feeling to a particular card, the more spirit is going to be able to express messages through you. Um, so I think this is a great tool. This is absolutely a great tool to, to learn which cards are associated with which chakras and kind of how to build that affirmation within you and that feeling that you get when, you, when you're learning cards. Oftentimes it's that feeling that's going to be your, your, your best guide, I think. Um, all right, let's move on. 21, the world. Um, it looks like everything is the same on that one as well. Um, definitely like that I can read the affirmations better. Do wish that the, they kept the font size on this side a little bit um, a little bit larger for the for the messages, but they're still readable. So, um, awesome. Okay, and then one of my favorite things that she does for um, this de this deck as well that I don't see in a lot of decks is this outpouring at the top here. Uh oh. Okay, helps if the cards are in the same order. And I just kind of want to go back and mention, like, this is the same number of cards, and definitely I'm, like, two cards ahead every time on on the deck here, on the new deck. So I just kind of want to just take a notice that, again, that these cards, I think, are a little bit thicker. Um, okay. So the very first one, Outpouring, this is... um. I like this, that she does this on each of these. Um, I like these one word definitions. I think sometimes you spend so much time on the major arcana knowing that that is the, the life path. It's definitely the first uh, tarot deck that came out. Um, and it was um, in the minor arcana came later. And sometimes the minor arcana, it can be harder to learn. There's more cards to it <laughs> than, than just the 21 or the 22 major arcana cards. So to have like a one word kind of description of a card is definitely helpful in learning, um, learning the rest of the deck. Um, so it looks like everything is the same. There is no um, affirmation on these cards, but it does give you the different signs um, that it is associated with. So that's really nice to see also. And we have love. Um, the only thing that they added to this, so now I know why this is slightly smaller is because they're adding to it. Um, attraction, connection, proposals, engagement, marriage, and then mutual respect was added to this one. So everything is the same on the two of cups. The Three of Cups, Friendship. See, I love this. I think that's so cool. Um, but everything else looks the same. Apathy for the Four of Cups. Um, this is different. In the upright, we have added some things. Self-absorption, depression, boredom nostalgia remorse okay so we've we've dropped remorse um which is i think fine because we've got regret up here to me it's more like regret um we've dropped remorse and we have exchanged it for frustration weariness meditation daydreaming and fantasizing very cool then we move on to
Uh, the Five of Cups, loss. And I'm just kind of... Um, okay, so there is something in the upright that's changed. We've got unwelcome change, focusing on... Okay, after unwelcome change, this side it goes to emotional instability and focusing on loss, where on this one it says uh, unwelcome change, then focusing on negative emotion, isolation, and loneliness. Then we've got returning to one's roots. Um, everything here seems the same, except for in the upright we have expanded the definition to childness, to include childness, childishness, immaturity, sharing gifts, charity, family, and support. Interesting. Um, this one looks like the same. The only thing that they have um, changed is in the upright. They have added uh, meditation. This looks all the same. After disappointment, we've added looking for the truth. Um, let's see. This looks exactly the same, except for we've added on the upright high self-esteem and triumph. Wait a second. Cheerfulness, joy, fulfillment, positivity, optimism, satisfaction, success, abundance, prosperity, achievements, rewards, confidence, high self-esteem, and triumph. Okay. Um, okay. So this one has changed a lot. Um, it looks like we've added in the upright after security, we've added harmony, abundance, domestic bliss, happy ever after, caring, children, fun, and in the reverse, um, this is also a marriage card, and in the reverse, um, it says unhappy home, family life, dysfunctional family, broken home, lack of security slash stability. And on the, on the old one, it just um, had up to broken home. So I like the expanded definition. Then we have page of cups. That has changed quite a bit as well. Um, so it says child, inner child, youthfulness on the left. But over here, it's, it goes to love, comfort, kindness, intuition, a good idea, a sensitive, thoughtful, introverted, cooperative, quiet, dreamy, imaginative, psychic, emotional, or dependent youth, someone interested in learning about emotional issues. Um, and uh, I mean, this is almost a completely different card. Both are correct. Um, I think the only one I would have kept, though, <clears throat> would be um, Admire. And maybe Happy News, too. Um, just because pages are typically news. All right, let's take a look at the reverse side of this. So I'm going to say the Page of Cups has is is changed a lot. Um, so in the reverse, it's childhood issues, sexual abuse, bad news, broken dreams, someone who does not plan for tomorrow. So they've definitely expanded the definition for the page. Uh, for the Knight of Cups, we've got creative expression and <clears throat> definitely changed up these people. Okay, so I like that we've kind of gone through and, and changed up these people a little bit. Um, people are sometimes the hardest ones uh, to learn. So after we get to follow your heart, then it starts to change and we've, we've updated to attraction, dating, affection, your ideal man or woman, an amiable, intelligent young person full of new ideas and proposals. And in the reverse, it has changed. So now it says unrequited love, illusion, escapism, lies, 
someone with a fragile sense of identity and poor personal boundaries. Interesting. Oh, goody. They fixed it. I was wondering if they were going to fix this one. Queen of Cups is not a Libra. She is definitely Cancer Scorpio, Pisces, <laughs> Cancer Scorpio or Pisces. Um, but Cancer seems, you know, Cancers are mushy middles too, you know. Um, so good. I'm glad to see that they fixed that. Um, the Zodiac sign associated with the Queen of Cups, that is important. Um, yeah, just like the rest of the court cards, this has, um, this court card has done quite an evolution as well. Um, now what we have is, <clears throat> I mean, mature emotional female, you know, mature female is the queen, any queen, right? Emotional is cups. So I can understand why they removed that because it, you're kind of on some level, you're supposed to kind of just get that. I think mature women are queens and cups is emotional, right? All right, so let's see um, how they change this here. A choice based on sincere feelings, imagination, dreams, empathy, occult, occult interests, deep feeling. Your mother or a mother substitute may play a significant role in near future events. That's interesting. I like that they did that. I like the divination that they kind of put in there. That does help a new person, particularly with people. Um, and then when we get to the reverse side of it, they did some work on people cards. That's great. Um, in the reverse, it is now fickleness, vanity, gullibility, those who sacrifice themselves unnecessarily for others. So I, I do like the expansion of the court cards 100%. Well done. Okay. Um, we're into emotional intelligence now. And the king has changed to trust, wealth of knowledge, Caring, healing, good advice, someone who understands unconscious motivations, a man in touch with his emotional life, a good friend, a mature, emotionally stable person. And then we can go to the reverse. Um, in the reverse... Bad advice, scheming, fraud, an alcoholic or drug addict, one who looks out only for himself. Um, so I, I find it interesting between the two because um, a king of cups is going to be kind of like very emotional and volatile because he's an emotional, he's cups. Um, so emotionally immature male, that's kind of like, I, I almost feel like that's a given, right? Because he's a man. <laughs> Um, if the king represents ultimate emotional maturity and, and compassion, right, then in the reverse, he would be emotionally immature. So I don't feel like this definition gives you as much. But when you get over to this side, you get um, the bad advice, scheming fraud, an alcoholic or drug addict. Um, to me, that is one of the biggest ways of dealing with... Um, uh, emotions that you don't want to feel, particularly ones that make you feel worthless. Um, people drink it away or, or, um, you know, get high and get it, get away from, to get away from it. Um, and then you kind of start to look only out for yourself as a result of that. So I, I do kind of see as, see alcoholism and drug addiction as an emotional problem. I definitely see it more of a, as an emotional problem. Um, so I think that's interesting that they, they called it out for this particular, um, character. Um, <clears throat> I just, I, I think, I think that's interesting. So I like, I like that they're adding attributes to the, to the people because sometimes, you know, you need those attributes to really kind of just find the, you know, kind of understand the people that are coming into the cards are also the people that are in their lives. Um, and they can write an entire book on people cards. I'm just, I'm just like, they should write an entire book on people cards. Just do an entire deck of people. Wait, wait, they did. I think Caroline missed it. She did a archetype cards. Maybe I need to do one of those unboxings. Okay. So here they've done a correction. Um, it is no longer an outpouring for, for wands. It is inspiration. That sounds like so much better. 
Um, it looks like everything has stayed the same, except in the upright, we have added accepting a challenge, potential talent, growth, and then we've added uh, action, travel, excitement, getting in the game. Two choice. Two of Wands choice. Um, we do have we do have some edits on ed a lot of cards. I'm impressed. This is a lot of work. All right, so let's see what's changed in the new one. Okay, so after detachment, um, the new is withdrawal and wonderlust. And then the reverse, what did we change here? We changed fear of change, indecisiveness, restricted options, and then we've added failed negotiations, lack of activity. Awesome. Then we've got foresight. Um, the only addition here is experiencing life. That's all the same. Community for the Four of Wands. And it looks like the only addition was Prosperity, the bottom here. Yep. So that's pretty much the same. And then we've got Conflict for the Five of Wands wands and it looks like clashing personalities egos strikes chaos all right and then this one says unruliness and this one just says di disobedience being defensive territorial and then they've added assertive and everything else in the reverse is the same um, so hopefully this, this video will help those of you who purchased the first edition. Um, and you, you can probably just use like a paint marker or Sharpie to kind of add some of these definitions to your cards. Um, all right. So recognition, let's see. Uh, this is for the Six of Wands, and everything is the same except after we get to supporters and crowds here, it says being in the spotlight, writing high. I do kind of like in the second deck that we're getting more, um, more application, I feel like, in the, um, in the definitions. Um, because I could use the words writing high in in a sentence as I'm talking um, I can just see that it's just easier to kind of or being in the spotlight writing high like I can just see that it just is different than success or victory like there's just um, well the picture helps kind of pull those definitions out from success and victory because that's exactly what that means um, but being in the spotlight and being recognized that's kind of, this person is being recognized, right? They are on their high horse. They are riding high. <laughs> they are above the crowd. They are being honored. They are getting recognition. Um, so I am kind of liking some of the, I, won't, I don't know how to explain it other than um, kind of like, just kind of like sentences, I guess, to kind of apply and give a more rounded meaning than just um, dictionary definitions or um, thesaurus, you know, options. Um, but everything else looks the, sta the same. This one is standing your ground. Um, this one is different. Let's see. After opposing stamina, holding your own, taking the high road, maintaining control, territorial and assertive. If you are thinking what I am thinking and thinking that I just heard territorial and assertive, we did. 
Um, we heard it under conflict under the um, under the five of wands. Um, when I look at the five of wands, I feel like this is practicing conflict, right? It's definitely conflict. It's like bickering, you know, it can be like bickering, but it can also be like, it's not like you're going to war and it's life or death bickering, right? Um, so they are similar cards. It's almost like these two cards are the same activity, right? Um, all of these people are trying to get to the leadership position or the high ground. And I feel like um, in this one, he could be defensive. He could be de uh, territorial. I kind of think of this as being in a leadership position personally, just because you do rise to the top. You do keep your enemies at bay. Um, so I don't disagree with it being defensive and territorial, both in the conflict card and the standing or bo both in the five of wands and the seven of wands I do feel like on some level they describe a very similar situation slightly different context um, um, I, I would say I like that it's more assertive here than defensive less defensive and more assertive because I do kind of think of this as more of a leadership card um, anyways, that was just interesting. It was just an interesting note. All right. Moving on. Ah, this one says travel news and this one says action. Um, I always, whenever I think of this one, I always think of movement. Um, so I don't think either one of them is wrong. <laughs> I don't think either one of these is wrong. Um, yeah, I don't think either one of them is right. I don't really know what to say other than, let's see what else. What's the difference? What's the differences here? A holiday romance is taking off, gaining momentum, ahead, thinking on your feet. Okay, and then we added hard work paying off, results, solutions, energetic. Um, and this one, and they've dropped sudden action. Um, but I always kind of interpret this as just kind of movement and action. Yeah, action and movement. Um, it looks like nothing has changed in the reverse. And there's really, I mean, sans a few like things. A lot of times um, there really isn't a wrong way to interpret these, these cards. Um, you can derive a lot of the same meanings from all the cards <laughs> like, they all kind of have can have the same meanings on some level um, it's just how you internalize it so there's almost no wrong in when you're interpreting these um, but I think there's some consensus on what most of the cards kind of mean um, I think resilience is a, is a perfect uh, definition for this card I've heard it referred to the nine of wands as um, the wounded warrior um, I always refer to this as boundaries, right? Having good boundaries. Um, so I, I think resilience, like in terms of the wounded warrior, this is also like a PTSD card, but in terms of a, a wounded warrior, um, there, he's still standing tall, hurt, bruised, broken, whatever. He's still standing there. Um, so it's persistence. I like that. All right, so it looks like um, what they have changed is fight your corner and last stand. Um, so those are the those are the two meanings that were added to this card. I also define this card as a burden, <laughs> and it looks like um, after taken for granted, taking on too much, and then delays is was added to the definition of the upright. Um, and we go to uh, Page of Wands is enthusiasm. And it looks like we added to uh, the characteristics of this person. All right, so everything about the page is different, everything. Um, so good news, swift news, letters, uh, phone calls, word of mouth, fresh, 
um, cheerful, childlike, fun, playful, active, optimistic, full of energy, bright ideas, new, exciting plans, creativity, lovable, and rogue. So those are all attributes of the Page of Wands in the first version of the deck. Um, what I can say about what, what I feel like they're doing is removing some of the kind of, uh, I guess stuff that you don't necessarily need. Um, good news, you know, want or pages are always, um, news messages. Um, so I think good news in whatever form it comes, they've removed that completely. It's just news, um, letters, phone calls, word of mouth, however that comes to you, it comes. Um, and they've exchanged all of those with good news, courage, optimism, competition, faithfulness, a courageous, energetic young person, salespersons, actors, politicians, preachers, inspirational speakers, athletes, performers. I agree with all of those attributes. I like that so much better than the previous. Um, I find this a lot more useful definition. Let's see what they've done in the reverse. Um, for the page of wands in the reverse, whew, um, this almost looks exactly, so they've definitely changed. I'm not even going to read it um, because it, it, it looks too much like the page of cups in the first edition. So we're going to read only the second edition um, for the page of wands. And it says acting out lack of energy, discouragement, obstacles, someone who breaks your heart, an impetuous or insensitive person. Yeah, that. This, I find this to be a lot more, this is a lot more accurate. Like it. I like it. I like it. Good deal. All right. And then we've got our passionate knight of wands. Um, he is a shameless flirt of all of them. He's probably like the sluttiest <laughs> of, of all of the knights. He's the sluttiest for sure. Um, but they have changed him quite a bit as well. So let's go ahead and just, the only thing they kept was being hasty. Yep. Nine of wands comes at you quick. <laughs> uh, quick decisions, ambition. Um, I would agree with that. The nine of wands is very ambitious. Um, generosity, a journey, sexual adventures, active, ardent, energetic people, negotiators, debaters, com competitors, sportsmen, those who love a challenge. And I almost want to say like they're, they speak a lot. These people, like they, um, they speak their heart, right? They, um, they're super passionate, super eager, um, wands people. And, um, I would say anything having to do with like talking is definitely like a wands kind of attribute. Okay. So let's go back to, uh, the reverse here. Um, looks like we have, uh, expanded we've just, we've just expanded, um, it by one who promises much, but does not deliver. Um, I, I like the court cards. I think you guys did witchy cauldron. You did a great job. You did a great job on the court cards for sure. Um, I love, I love what you've, you've done with the court cards here. Okay. Um, we've got vibrancy for the queen of wands. Um, She's completely changed. Uh, good business sense, confidence, foresight, an attractive, magnetic, mature woman, a, a helpful friend who is well-liked, a kind, loyal, generous, confident, and competitive woman who enjoys enterprise and the limelight and also values her home and family life. Um, in the reverse, we've changed it completely as well. It's seduction, lies, strictness, disorganization, prudish, moral, moralistic persons who try to impose their values on others. Ooh. Um, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to mess with the court cards. I'm not even going to read the other one just not to confuse the issues. Um, cause I, I do think that the definitions for the court cards are definitely better in the new edition. Um, so definitely a lot of good, uh, changes I think in the, in the new in the new edition. Um, I don't necessarily agree with the change from vision to leadership. Kings are all leaders. Um, but I, I do kind of think of her of more of a, a visionary than the King of Wands. Um, but I do feel like Wands is visionary. Um, leadership is all Kings. 
Um, so let's kind of see. And yeah, let's see, let's see what it says. Um, being in charge, decisiveness, uh, independence, loyalty, optimism, impulsiveness, unexpected income, someone who inspires others to creative achievement. I like that. Um, hmm, this one's tough because I kind of like both of them. I really kind of feel like both of these really describe a King of Wands. Energetic, experienced, optimistic, confident, strong, friendly, funny, charming, uh, way with words, fearless, free thinking, motivated, action oriented, proud, passionate, honest. Um, I think both of those definitions on both cards are good. I like visionary better for King of Wands. Um, I might like it better for Queen of Wands to be honest, but uh, I like it better than leadership, but leadership is a business owner. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they are leaders. Kings, King of Wands are, are leaders, but all Kings are leaders. So that's why I don't necessarily like that one. Um, let's see what it says in the reverse here. Um, in the reverse, the King of Wands, um, it, um, In the reverse for this one, it says lies, deviousness, prejudice, a liar or devious person, one whose main focus is self-promotion. Hmm. Um, I can, and then on the old one, it says rude, boorish, forceful, uh, bully, uh, impulsive. I think those are good definitions of a king in reverse. Um, I almost wish that they would have kept those on this card. I wish they would have kept rude, uh, boorish, forceful, even bully and impulsiveness. Um, on, on the definition of this card, but I am impressed with the change in the court cards. I, I have to say, I, I really am. All right, so we've got clarity um, for the Ace of Swords. Wow, you guys really did do a lot of work on these um, and, and updating some of this stuff. Uh, so here, it just in, it adds intensity, stimulate, and stimulating people. Um, otherwise, everything has, has stayed the same for the Ace of Swords. And let's see here. We've got decision for a number for uh, two of swords. Uh, everything on here seems to be exactly the same, um, and I kind of agree. I'm I'm happy with the with the definition of the three of uh, or with the two of swords. Uh, three of swords pain. Um, okay, so we added to this one also. Separation, sadness, heartache, wait, heartache, unhappiness, upheaval, grief, sorrow, upset, disorder, confusion, alien. Okay. So after alienation, we've got loss, distraction, ill health, conflict, and disillusion. I don't have a problem with any of those. Um, so I would say, yeah, there's just, there's just a few more words on that one. Um, so nothing, not a whole lot changed. Um, let's see this one. Uh, well, the further I get into these, the more stuff you added for each card. Um, okay. So what has been added to the four of swords? It's after regrouping rather than recuperation, they have healing, hospitalization, introspection, planning for the future. Um, I do like that you have hospitalization in here because like if you get a number of swords in any uh, reading, like they probably have some sort of health issue. They just do. Like swords is like the most negative. Um, it's just the most negative suit in the whole deck. 
So if I get like a four of swords with a nine of swords and a ten of swords and an eight of swords, I'm like, you better go to the doctor. <laughs> Um, but otherwise this looks, um, about, about the same. So the only thing that's different is, um, the introspection and planning for the future, um, which is also another, um, it, it really kind of puts the air part of, of the sword suit in there. Um, the thinking aspect of it, I feel like, um, but yeah, not much has changed on that. And we've got defeat. Um, so I, what I love about this card just from the writer weight deck is that you can interpret this a couple of different ways. Um, these two people are either, this guy looks like he might be crying in the background. They may have walked away. This guy didn't have to even strive very hard to get his win. It's like, are there any winners in this? Um, truly, do you know what I'm saying? He's got a whole bunch of swords he's got to carry that he doesn't need. And these two people are just like walking away. Like they're there. It was, it was like a, not even a well-earned fight, I guess. Um, so what I think is interesting is that when you start with the definition as defeat or surrender or walking away, um, although I've never really thought of this as walking away, but I guess it is, it makes sense. They are identifying this definition is identifying with the people in the background back here rather than with the person holding all of the swords. <laughs> I think. Um, so let's see what this has that's a different um, underhanded behavior. Okay, so then the next one is, uh, so what they've added to this card is abuse, violence, crime, rape, murder, assault. Wow, that went dark. That went so dark. And um, on some level, I appreciate that um, definition because um, he has left these people in a vulnerable state. They don't have their swords. They're walking away with nothing in defeat. Um, and here he's getting everything. Um, that's interesting. That is interesting. Okay, so that's the only thing that's changed um, in that one. All right, so now we go to the Six of Swords. Um, and it looks like we've added in the upright journeys, uh, traveling, travel overseas, going on holiday, and feeling deflated. Then we have the Seven of Swords. And it looks like we've added Escaping Interconnection. Oh, Flexible and Escaping Interconnection. And then we go to, oh, this is interesting. Um, So we've changed this from isolation to restriction. And I, I kind of like, um, I like restriction better. Um, because you do, you, it's more, I almost go with trapped, but restriction is the same thing. Um, but it's really trapped by your own thoughts with these guys or with this card. Um, let's see what they have changed. Let's see. Powerless, silenced, crisis. So then the new one. Um, what they've added to it is dilemma, drama, imprisonment, punishment, and slavery. Um, and that looks like the only change. And then we get to anxiety or the nine of swords. And let's see, mental anguish, guilt, regret, remorse. Um, so the only thing they added to this was focusing on past subject of gossip. And let's see. Um, that's all, that's the only change I see. There's probably some changes that I'm missing. I hope not, but I, I imagine I'm, you know, not perfect. I'm sure there's stuff I've missed. 
because um, there is quite a bit of information on these cards. This is a very useful deck for sure. Um, these training decks are a great way to even just get clarification on decks that you're you're that are new and you're like I don't know what this means. Sometimes it's easy to have like just a few cards to string together a few sentences to kind of clarify what you're what you're reading in a new deck. But all right, so here we go. Endings and defeat. Uh, what do we what do we change on this one? Um, after rock bottom, it says hitting a wall, dead end, severing ties, goodbyes, nail in the coffin. And it looks like we also changed the reverse as well. Um, this one says pulling yourself together, learning from past hardships, and then fears coming true um, is the last one. And let's see, um, curiosity for the page of swords. Um, and you guys have done a lot of work, so it looks like I'm reading the whole card <laughs> for the page of swords. Um, it says delayed news, patience needed, ideas, inspiration, planning, vigilance, protective, guarded fairness, one who is calculating and unconcerned about the feelings of others. Um, So this goes here, right here it says, think before you speak, don't get drawn into arguments, mental agility. And then this one on the other side, um, it says, one who is calculated and unconcerned about the feelings of others, communicators, scientists, mathematicians, um, aviators, and travelers. Um, the one thing that I know about the Page of Swords is they're super insecure. <laughs> it's just really insecure. Um, they're like, they're the the self-sabotage kids, right? Like the whole world is against me. I can't take part in this because nobody wants me. I mean, that's kind of like how I kind of feel about them. They are curious creatures though. And they do think a lot. Um, they are intellectuals. Um, this think before you speak though, boy, that I really wish was still on this card. Um, I do wish that was still on this card because I think that's a good one. Um, and I don't think it's that that um, Page of Swords is unconcerned about the feelings of others so much as they are so concerned of their own feelings that uh, they don't have room to consider others' feelings. That's what I think. Um, okay, so we'll just kind of, oh, and then what's in the reverse here? Malice. Oh, we changed that too. Okay, so I like that they've, she's taken all this news stuff out of here. Um, because, you know, pages are messages, are, are messages, or, you know, new, they're news. <laughs> they're news. Heart news, inspiration news, thinking news, or legal news, um, you know, prosperity news, checks in the mails, that kind of stuff, right? Um, I would say that you've you've done so well with with these cards here, um, with these key cards. Um, I think in the next edition, which I would love to see um, and do a comparison on, is if you had um, the court cards, right? Of what the the king, the queen, the knight, and the page all represent, um, because all pages are messages. Um, so all knights, for the most part, I think are movement cards. <laughs> Um, all right. So, uh, okay. So we've got this again in, in the reverse, but, um, but that says malice, hypocrisy, um, suspicion, uh, problems, someone who is unconcerned with the feelings of others. Um, I like this a lot better. I think this is a much more well-rounded, um, definition of, than what the first edition was. But, um, unconcerned with the feelings of others, I feel like was already put in the upright. Um, so I, and, and it's not that they're unconcerned with the feelings of others. I just think they lack awareness. Like they just too caught up in their own insecurity. All right. Moving on to the Knight of Swords. Um, the Knight of Swords and the old one, it says mental activity. In this one, it says haste. I think haste is a better definition for sure for this card. 
Um, it looks like almost everything is the same. What do we add? Okay. Um, so well, we'll just start with what they've added and what they've taken out. After quick, quick wit, they've taken out the bottom part of this, it looks like. And then um, it, it adds warns against impulsive or rash behavior, which we've got impulsive here. Um, I would say daring and rebellious would be rash behavior. A strong, assertive, and decisive person, one who gets what he or she wants. I would agree with all of those things about the, the Knight of Swords. I would agree about all of those. All right, and then what is in the reverse? How has that changed? Um, definitely kudos for, um, for kind of going above and beyond with these court cards. Um, let's see, everything is out. Rude, tactless, hurtful. And then the only change in the reverse is someone who opposes and upsets your plans. Hmm. I can see that for the Knight of Wands, especially if it's not something he wants <laughs> or she. Um, all right. So now we've got astute for the Queen of Swords. I think that is a great, um, word for her. Um, and I do like what you've done here. Okay. This is difficult. You've got a lot of information in this little spot here. So I completely understand why you kind of changed the font size here. Um, all right. So thought dominates feelings, perceptiveness, keen insight, fair judgment, right decisions. Now is the time to stand up for yourself and be clear about your wants and needs. Clarity, clear about your wants and needs. I think that's very queen of swords. Uh, one who has suffered loss or hardship an intelligent, witty, analytical woman. Um, I think principled and fair um, also define her very well. I think quirky also defines her well. Um, she is strong and she is discerning. So that one's tough. Um, that, that one's tough. Like, I like both of these cards, to be honest with you. Um. Hmm. I like, I like both. I like some of the stuff in this one that is not in this one. Just saying. Um, that one's tough. Um, but you still did a, a, a really well, a good job on the, you did a good, you did a good job on the queen of swords without a doubt. Um, uh, I don't know. Okay. So in the original it says overly critical, pessimistic, lack of empathy, rude, malicious gossip. Um, and in the new one, it says gossip, malicious lies, bias, loss, misery, one who puts people down and can't be trusted. Hmm. Um, I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest with you. Um, I can see her being malicious for sure. Um, I don't see her being a liar. I see Paige being more of a liar than the queen. The queen, I can see being more of an instigator, uh, not necessarily giving lies, but more like half truths or like what they do in the news gives you, give you a snippet of something that's out of context. Um, the lack of empathy. I can see with the queen of swords when she's in the, in the reverse position or an abusive position. Um, interesting. I like it. I like the court cards a bunch. I'm really, really impressed. Okay. So our King has also changed quite a bit and it looks like what has everything changed after okay. And I would say all court cards are this, or all the swords court cards are head over heart for sure. They put more, um, stock in what they can think about versus what they feel. Um, 
so this is what's added here is that the king of swords is head over heart an unemotional analytical man of authority who makes balanced judgments and gives excellent advice um the writer way always has such a stark black or white kind of feeling to um to it and i i do kind of think of a king of swords as like a military man um, somebody who is there to get the job done. It's not that he doesn't have feelings and opinions, but it doesn't have anything to do with the job. Or it doesn't help the job. So he was not going to think about those feelings or opinions or emotional side of things when the job is getting done. It's not something he's going to ponder until after the fact. Um, uh, but unemotional, analytical, man of authority is definitely a, a great definition for the King of Swords. Um, yeah, and he's looking to see the truth, but not emotional truth. No emotional, <laughs> not when it's, you know, in the context of a problem. All right. So, um, I don't know that either. See, this is hard. This is so tough. I can, I, there's so many definitions to choose from, right? So in the reverse, it's saying he's selfish, ruthless, devious, premeditated malice, someone who is overly cautious. Um, where in the old cards, it says lack of structure, routine, intelligent, used in a bad way, irrational and illogical. And I like this. I think what I'm missing from this side is the lack of structure or routine, because typically you think of a military man or a judge or, or anybody who's going to be kind of like engineering kind of, those people do have a lot of structure in their lives. Um, a lot of self-discipline. And so I might say that, um, a King of Swords in the reverse is not only going to be abusive, <laughs> verbally abusive, but he's also going to be, um, he's going to lack some self, some self-discipline. Um, all right, let's take a look here. We'll go on to, Okay. Potential for abundance is the Ace of Pentacles. And here it says prosperity. I like prosperity better. Um, let's see what's new. Um, nothing is new on this card other than that prosperity balance. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I'm just kind of noticing the white font versus the black font. And I'm like, which one is easier to read? And I almost feel like the white font is a little easier to read. Although I'm kind of on the fence about these different highlighted things. I think um, good graphic design. I don't think that you need that so much. Um, so I would think in the, I don't know, maybe it's something that you're just trying to highlight out. Um, a certain way it you know when your eye is bouncing all over the card oftentimes your eye is going to bounce to the place that it needs to in order to get the message um the influence for the message that spirit wants you to have um but i do find these kind of backgrounds or these highlighted um the highlighted text kind of distracting it is kind of distracting okay so it doesn't look like anything has changed at least not in the reverse um, but there is something transferring money, profit and loss. And then it, um, they've added income and out income and outgoings, financial decisions, financial stress and partnership. All right. Number three of three of pentacles teamwork. And it looks like they have added, uh, a couple of things. Um, After attention to detail, they've got tradesperson, achievements, recognition, and reward. Um, in the reverse, they've changed it. So it says, um, wasting time, lack of ambition, delays, disappointment, paltry effort. Um, yeah, that definitely needed to be changed. I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to um, read that one because I don't think it's accurate at all. 
um, in the reverse. But wasting time, lack of ambition, delays, disappointment, paltry effort. I think those are great descriptions for the three of pentacles in the reverse. Uh, let's see. Then we've got budgeting. Let's see. Oh, we've got we've got some additions on this one. It looks like um, some additions to the reversed as well. So let's see. We get hoarding, stinginess, control, possessiveness, financial stability, financial security. All right. So they've added in the upright saving for big purchases or retirement, greed, materialism, and wealth. And in the reverse, we've changed it, or they've changed it so that it says shedding the old, letting go of people, possessions, or issues, generosity, and sharing. And it looks like the only thing that they added was sharing to that reversed meaning there. Um, I'll probably do another card reading where I just read the whole deck <laughs> in the uprights again and then everything in the reversed again. Um, this is more a comparison between the first and the second deck. Um, it looks like the only thing that um, has been added to this is hardship, bad luck, homelessness, poverty, and unemployment is what has been added to the five of pentacles. And in the reversed, in the reverse, it says what has changed. Um, in the reverse, it says unemployment, frustration, adversity, spiritual awareness, faith restored. Um... And the other one, it says improvement in finances, luck, end of hardship, positive change. I like them both. Uh, I like them both. <laughs> so, uh, but they are slightly different. So there you have it. Charity and giving versus generosity. I think generosity is better. Um, let's see. Looks like the upright and the reverse are both slightly different. Um, this one says giving and receiving, gratitude, being valued, being well paid. Um, and in the reverse, we've changed it um, completely. It says unpaid bills, money problems, bad debts, greed, selfishness, stinginess, and miserliness. Um, I'm not going to read the old one because it looks like it's just a copy of the upright. So this is more accurate. All right. To making investments. So we're kind of running into kind of some of this. I almost like the white font better for some of these. And you'll have to decide, um, or let me know in the comments, which do you think, um, reads better? Um, Let's see what has changed. Manifestation of ideas or goals, inheritance, cultivation, growing, gestation, nurturing. And then they have perseverance, patience, and planning. I like those as additions. Those are great. Um, and uh, these have stayed the same, so that's good. Patience. Um, what has been for the... Eight of Pentacles. What has changed here? After success, we've got accomplishment, ambition, confidence, results, rewards. And uh, it looks like everything has stayed the same. Um, otherwise, in, in the reverse. Other than the, um, I kind of like the white font better, I'm going to say. I, I do think it, I like that better. It's easier to read. All right, then we've got independent wealth. Um, she is a boss bitch for sure. I love her. <laughs> the Nine of Pentacles is who I've been trying to be for the last five years. Um, or who I have been, I think. Um, okay, let's take a look at this. We, we've added some things on this one. Okay, so what it has added was freedom, wisdom, maturity, and indulgence. And I would agree with all of those things. When you get to the Nine of Pentacles, you do have some freedom, which gains you some wisdom and maturity. And you indulge, because heck, you only live once. Um, I, I do like the white font better. I For me, I can read it better. 
Um, so it looks like the thing that has um, changed on here is shady investments is the only thing that has changed um, in the reverse. And then we go to culmination, which is the 10 of pentacles. And we have unexpected financial windfall, lump sum, will, deeds, trust funds, inheritance, solid foundations, privilege, inheritance, inherited issues, ancestry, family, home, business, um, responsibilities, value, support, issues, riches, old money, affluence. Um... I, I mean, they just added, they just added a few things. Um, and I think, I think the overall meaning I get from both is just, this is old money, <laughs> family wealth kind of stuff, inheritance. Um, but I always kind of think of like the 10 of, um, the 10 of pentacles is like the ultimate in success, right? Um, your life is abundant. You can do whatever you want. Um, your family is abundant. Everybody's happy and loving and, you know, your cup runneth over. All your cups are full. You're passionate. You're emotionally sound and well. Um, intellectually, your mind is clear. And um, in uh, the physical, you are prosperous and growing. All right, so let's go to, ooh, okay, interesting. We've changed from investment to new job for the Page of Pentacles. Um, we've got that good news in here. I'm not sure why we are putting that in here um, when, I don't know, you've kind of made a, they've kind of made a, a point of taking it out of the, the news part out of the emotional or the cups and the wands from what I remember. Um, but I do think that, uh, the court cards would definitely benefit from one of these little key cards here. Um, just because then you can free up some of the space on this, um, and get rid of the good news on every page. Um, cause pages are all news or messages. All right. Let's see what we've added here. Okay, so right after setting goals, it says opportunity to increase income, books, negotiations, an open-minded person, students, scholars, one who is willing to learn, someone you can count on. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. New job, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Um, and let's see what it says here. Everything is the same. Nope. Um, bad news in earthly matters, money problems, ignorance, someone who does not appreciate you. And then we have the Knight of Pentacles, who is routine. That is such a good word for him. Um, okay, so patience, perseverance, unexpected sources of money or income, time heals all wounds, reliable, sorry, Patient, conventional, trustworthy, hardworking people. Someone who perseveres to reach a goal. Um, very different than, um, very different than uh, the original. Um, here it says patient, practical, loyal, responsible, persistent, protective, defensive, conservative, stubborn, ambitious, hard worker, profit, finish what you start. Um, hmm. I almost like the, the old one better. I almost like the old one better. Um, and in the new, uh, reverse, it says greed being underpaid, lack of inspiration, avarice, someone who is too hasty and makes mistakes, a diffident, uninspired person. And in the, um, in the old one, it said impatient, lazy, apathy, lack of common sense, unstable, unskilled, unreliable, and disloyal. Hmm. Hmm. I never think of, um, the Knight of Pentacles as being greedy, but it does, doesn't mean he can't be. Um, 
I do think of the Knight of Pentacles as an uninspired person. They are not inventors. They're not. <sighs> if you want somebody to maintain the status quo, that's your Knight of Pentacles. <laughs> And there is something to be said for that kind of routine. You need that kind of consistency in some areas of your life. Um, ooh, that one's tough. There's some, there's some good things on both of these cards. For the most part, though, I do like the new cards better. And then we've got our Queen of Pentacles, who is um, Abundance. And... Oh, we've changed her quite a bit too. I like that we've gotten rid of mature, grounded female. And now we have fertility, prosperity, sensuality, responsibility, creative, creativity, wealth, common sense, nurturance, someone concerned with the welfare of others, a capable woman who is both a mother and a businesswoman. Um, yeah, I like that a hundred percent. I think it's much better than the original, much better. And she's so close to the Empress in terms of like her femininity and her, she's a, she's a creator. She's, I'd say she's closest to the Empress of all of the Queens. All right. So in the reverse, what has changed everything, um, in the reverse, it says insecurity, instability, fear, someone who is lazy, suspicious, lacks motivation, feels insecure and neglects her responsibilities. All right. Wow. I like this one. <laughs> I like that one better than this one. All right. Now we get to the last one. The King of Pentacles. He represents security. And what has changed? Um, it looks like they have replaced provider with someone preoccupied with financial matters. And then in the reverse... I have to say that he is an empire. He's a king, like, well, I guess the, the emperor is more of a kingmaker, but he is right along the lines of a kingmaker, right? He, he almost, he has the money to fund all the kings, um, you know, for a king of wands to take on a new idea, for the king of cups to take on some new social project. <laughs> um, so I almost feel like he's the one who backs everyone. He, he, um, yeah. Oh, it says empire thriving in both. I just missed it. I didn't read that part of it. All right. Let's see what he does in the reverse. Let's see what an abusive King of Pentacles looks like. Um, he's materialistic, dull, preoccupation with money. One who mismanaged money. Someone who will do anything for money. Um, I like this one in the sense that, okay, he's ungrounded male. Maybe, maybe not. Um, unsuccessful, maybe, maybe not. Um, or unsuccessful businessman. It says maybe, maybe not is what I kind of think. But corruption and extortion, those both feel like King of Pentacles um, that I kind of wish were on this side but um, or in the new deck. But I think it's well done. I think it's accurate um, in ways that it kind of... Uh, was not accurate before so and then I do like the upgrades and the court cards are significant um so overall I'm impressed I'm pleased thank you so much witchy cauldron for sending me the new upgraded uh the new and improved deck I will um also do another video where I only read the new deck and the new definitions um so that people can use uh that one to kind of learn their, their tarot deck as well and look for this brand new unexpected deck called the uh, Lepis Tarot. Ooh. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna do that one here soon too. What a beautiful deck. Um, but overall, thank you very much. I think the new deck is beautiful and wonderful and I can't wait to, um, start using it and teaching with it. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful, blessed day. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. If this is going to prompt you to buy the second edition, let me know. Um, just, you know, comments in the comment section, the hearts, thumbs up, you know, those will help the, the channel grow. But thank you again. Thank you all for joining me. Thanks for watching. Have a beautiful, blessed day.